been making videos here on this channel for about a year and a half now, probably close to like 18 or 19 months. And over that period of 18 or 19 months, I have had a ton of different cameras. So many cameras, in fact, that I had to make a little bit of a list, even to remember all the various cameras that I've had. So over the past 18 or 19 months, I've had the Fuji X-T2, the Panasonic G9, the Hasselblad 500CM, the Nikon FE2, the GoPro Hero 7, the Leica Q, Sony A7 III, Canon EOS R, and finally right now, the Leica MD. So I've gotten the question a number of times over the past 18 or 19 months on how I afford all of this various different camera equipment. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So the majority of people that have this much camera equipment are typically professional photographers that do photography full-time or as their main source of income. For me, that's certainly not the case. I certainly have done quite a bit of professional photo and video work where I've shot weddings and I've done various like work for different companies and things like that, but I'm definitely not a professional photographer in the sense that my main income source is from photography. So you're probably wondering where I am right now. And I'm actually in my basement of my house right now for a couple of different reasons. Number one, the reason is because of coronavirus. I can't go to my office, so unfortunately I have to work from home, which isn't really that big of a deal. I do work from home pretty frequently, so that's not that big of a change for me. But the reason that I'm in my basement specifically rather than my office that you guys have seen multiple times in past videos is because my roommate is actually a police officer that works the night shift. So he works from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., which is a ridiculous shift. And so he gets home from a 12 hour shift just about the same time that I start working every day. And so I come down here, I hide out in the basement so that when I'm talking on phone calls and stuff like that, I'm not keeping him awake so that he can get a couple hours of rest after that long shift. Before we jump into this, make sure you go down below, hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. It helps out the channel a ton. Thank you very much. How I afford my camera gear actually has nothing to do with photography at all. I actually work for a technology company that sells primarily high-end storage, but also servers, software, and things of that nature. All stuff that resides in various companies' data centers. If you don't work in the IT industry, you might not be super familiar with what high-end storage is. And the simplest way that I can explain this to other photographers is think of how much data we generate just by creating photos and making videos and things like that. We're generating tons and tons, hundreds of gigabytes or maybe even terabytes worth of data that needs to be stored somewhere. Oftentimes the amount of data that we create exceeds the capacity of our computer's internal hard drives. And so what happens is we need to begin purchasing external hard drives that give us additional storage on top of what we have on our computers. In the most extreme cases, what some very professional photographers and videographers will do is buy what are called RAID arrays. A RAID array is essentially an external storage device that allows you to input multiple hard drives and it has built-in redundancy called RAID that allows for one or multiple of those drives to fail without losing any of your data. So it's a much more reliable and safe way of storing massive amounts of data. Now think of the amount of data that even the most high-end photographers and videographers are creating and now compare that to how much data a massive corporation like a massive bank or maybe even a healthcare facility might generate. Whereas photographers and videographers are generating hundreds of gigabytes, maybe terabytes, maybe into the tens of terabytes worth of data, these companies are generating hundreds of terabytes, if not petabytes, maybe even tens to hundreds of petabytes in certain situations. And a petabyte is a thousand terabytes, which is a massive amount of data. You would have to record so much video and so much video in like 8K raw resolution in order to reach a petabyte worth of data. Me personally, all the videos and all the photos that I've ever created is like five terabytes worth of data. Whereas some of the companies that I'm working with have multiple petabytes worth of data that they need to store. The storage systems that these companies are using need to be extremely high performing, extremely resilient, and need to be custom built for each company's individual needs. My role is what's called a pre-sales engineer. My job is to work with customers, understand their needs, understand what they're trying to accomplish, and then build a solution that delivers a business outcome. It's partially a sales job, but also partially a technical 
technical consulting role where I help my customers understand what's possible and ultimately help make their businesses run more efficiently from a technology standpoint. And so that is part of how I afford all of my camera gear. Finally emerged from the basement after a long, solid day of work. And I just realized, I looked outside and the last time I pulled into my driveway, I kind of parked in a weird spot for one reason or another. And it made me realize that I literally have not left this house in three full days because of the quarantine. I am going absolutely stir crazy in here. And I'm actually legitimately trying to quarantine myself and I'm trying not to go anywhere because I personally don't want to get sick and God forbid I was to see one of my family members and get them sick and then have something terrible happen to them that would be devastating so I'm legitimately trying to quarantine myself have not been leaving the house but I cannot tell you that I'm not going stir crazy because I am and to prove it I'll show you this so I bought this thing the other day I bought a Nintendo Switch hopefully the camera can focus on that this thing is awesome and i bought the game zelda which if you're not familiar with zelda it's like an open world format game it is super super fun and over the last five days i have put in 20 hours of play time on this game i have not played video games that much literally since high school and if that doesn't go to show that i'm going a little bit stir crazy i don't know what does so back to the topic at hand we we're talking about how i afford this ridiculous amount of camera equipment. And so the key to a lot of this is the fact that I don't actually own all of these cameras at the same time. And I've more or less figured out a way to buy cameras and then sell them a couple of months later for the exact same amount of money that I purchased them for. Essentially getting a free camera for whatever period of time it is, one month, two months, three months, five months, who knows? It typically depends on which camera it is and how much I like it, but I've figured out sort of this methodology on how I can purchase a camera, use it for a period of time, and then sell it for literally the exact same price that I purchased it for. I've already created a video that goes into pretty solid detail explaining exactly how this works, and I'll make sure to link that video up here in the top right hand corner for you to watch that after this video, but I'll break down real quick the three different steps that are involved with this process. Step number one is to always buy used gear and make sure you're getting a good deal. There's a couple different ways to figure out whether or not you're getting a good deal and I explained them in that video. Step number two is to be aware of depreciation and when the camera that you have is going to significantly drop in price. So say you purchased the Sony a7R 3 You purchased it used, you got a really solid deal on it and you love the camera. However, when the a7R 4 is announced or when it's released, that a7R 3 the used value of it is likely to drop significantly. So there's a couple different ways that you can be aware of when these announcements are gonna happen so that you can make sure that you sell your camera prior to that announcement so that you can realize the full financial value of that camera and not have to soak the cost of that depreciating asset. Step number three is to sell your products on sites that don't take a significant seller fee. So eBay and Amazon oftentimes will take between like an eight and 10% cut off the top of your profits. There are, however, other places on the internet like forums and pages on Reddit that allow for you to sell your gear with zero seller fee. So you take 100% of the profit for yourself, which allows for you to increase the amount of money that you're getting for that asset and therefore allowing for you to get better and cooler cameras after you sell that asset and allowing for you to not lose any money during this process. I talk a lot more about this in detail in the video that I have linked up here and I'll also link it down here in the description below. So guys, there's really no secret on how I afford all of my camera gear. A, I have a standard day job that affords me a steady stream of income, and B, I've figured out sort of a methodology that allows for me to purchase really cool camera gear, use it for a significant period of time, make videos about it, things like that, and then sell it after a set period of time for essentially the same price that I paid for it. I think you guys might think it's kind of interesting, the exact details that go into how I do that, and so I'll leave the video again linked up here and linked down in the description below so you can check it out. Anyway, 
anyways, guys, thanks as always for watching. I appreciate it big time. I hope you're all staying healthy out there. And I'm wishing the best for all the photographers out there that are struggling a little bit right now. I know that tons of weddings and tons of gigs are getting canceled. I actually had one myself this past weekend. I was supposed to be in Arizona doing a little bit of photography for a company down there. Unfortunately, that got canceled. But my thoughts are out to anybody out there who's struggling a little bit right now. Times are gonna get better. If you haven't already, definitely go down below and give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it big time and I'll plan to see you guys in the next one. Peace. Yep, this is a completely fake phone call. I'm literally just talking to the phone right now with nobody on it just because I need B-roll. Yep. That's how YouTube works.